Welcome to the Snowtrack Shader tutorial by Peerplay. This is the first tutorial of 2018 and I'm hoping that you will like this subject. But before I continue with the tutorial, I want to thank everyone for the amazing last year. Many people have subscribed to the channel and I'm happy to welcome now over 2000 subscribers. Without you, the viewer viewing this video, this tutorial would be pointless, so thank you. A special thanks to everyone that has donated to my PayPal and everyone that became a patron on my Patreon. Your support and loyalty has been heartwarming. Now without further ado, let's learn to create this shader. I've created this cute little scene with a car driving on a snow plane. Everywhere where the wheels hit the surface, the vertices are pushed down and the material of the shader changes, making it appear as tracks in the snow. This shader is a vertex displacement tessellation shader. Now to make sure that everyone knows what tessellation is and how it works in shaders, I will start by explaining some tessellation basics in this first part. We'll start in a new empty project and look at some shader examples with tessellation. We'll look at what they are, how we write them in CG language and how we can use them. Let's first add a few game objects to our scene. Go to game object, 3D object and select the plane. And let's also select the sphere. We'll place this a little bit to the right and scale it upwards. Now go to the top left corner of the scene view and select shaded wireframe. Now we can clearly see the individual vertices of the objects. I will use a tessellation chapter of the Unity manual as a guide in this first part. We'll copy paste the examples and look at the lines of code to see how they work. Now first of all, what is tessellation? Tessellation is a tiling of a plane using one or more geometric shapes called tiles with no overlaps and no gaps. You can see here some examples of the tiling in 2D. But we are using tessellation to tessellate a 3D mesh. So what is the definition of computer graphics tessellation? I'm quoting Wikipedia here. In computer graphics tessellation is used to manage data sets of polygons, sometimes called vertex sets presenting objects in a scene and divide them into suitable structures for rendering. Especially for real-time rendering, data is tessellated into triangles. Let's now look at the example shaders to get a better understanding of tessellation. This first shader does not do any tessellation, but just moves the vertices along their normal direction based on a displacement map. So let's select everything, Control copy and go to Unity. Let's right click create, go to shader, standard turf shader and we'll call this tessellation example. Now let's open up the shader, we can remove everything and paste the example shader. Let's save this. Now based on this shader we can create a material and you'll see that it requires a disp texture which is a displacement texture. Now I googled height map and I found this image and I'm using this as an example. Now once you've got your texture in the library, then just select this and drag it onto the displacement texture. Now just drag and drop this tessellation onto the plane and also onto the sphere. Now this shader does not do any tessellation, it only moves the vertices up into their normal direction. So all of the vertices will go upwards and the sphere has its normals pointing into any direction so it will go all around but as it does not have any desolation it does not show any of the detail that is into the height map and we want to see this detail into our plane so let's use a shader that does use desolation so back at the manual we'll scroll down and here we can find our fixed amount of tessellation shader and what this means is that the tessellation amount will be the same on the entire mesh. So let's select everything again, copy. Now let's go to our example shader. We'll remove everything here and we'll paste our new shader. Let's save this and go back to Unity. And now in Unity, you'll notice more detail. 
because we've already got some tessellation. The tessellation is set at 4. If we'll set it back to 1, we can see the initial mesh. And if we crank it up, then it will tessellate more and more and give more detail to the mesh. So if I put it all the way up to 32, then we can see some really nice mountains here. And we can also adjust the displacement value of the vertices, which is now set to 1. We can set it to 0 and the vertices won't be displaced, but there will be a lot of tessellation into this mesh. So if we put it up to 1 again, we can see some nice hills. This looks kind of fun. Now on this sphere you can see that the vertices are all going into their normal directions. Uh, we could also specify that they are only going upwards. So if we go back to the shader, let's change that. And we can change this right here in the displacement. We can see here that the v.vertex.xyc plus is the v.normal times the displacement. So if we change this to only its y value, we're going to not take the normal, but we're going to just do plus is its displacement. And if we save this and go back, we can see that it's all going upwards. Now you'll notice that when I zoom in or zoom out, the tessellation amount will always be the same. But we can also add a distance-based tessellation to the shader to fix this and when we are very near it will be a very high tessellation and when we're far away the tessellation will be a lot less. So let's go back to the Unity manual. And here we select the distance based tessellation shader, select it all, go back to our shader again, select everything and replace it with the new one and let's save this one. And now back in Unity, we can see a distance-based tessellation. If I scroll further away, it will become less tessellation or even no tessellation at all. And if we're getting nearer, it will be more tessellated. Now let's have a quick look at the minimum requirements of writing a tessellation shader. So the first thing we need to declare is tessellate in the pragma in the CG program. And behind the tessellate, we will declare the function of the name. Uh, which is test distance in this case, but th this can be anything, but the tessellate has to be tessellate. And next, the minimum target version is going to be 4.6 for tessellation. Uh, you can't use a previous version of a shader, we have to use 4.6. This means that it does not run on every platform and every graphics card, but you do need a pretty good graphics card to use this and it has to support DirectX 11 or OpenGL 4.0 and we'll also need to include the tessellation.cg ink. Now tessellation also requires app data and it requires the vertex tangent, the normal and the text coordinate because it reads of the UV info of the text coordinate of the displacement map. And another interesting thing is in the tessellation distance function, we're not saying app data full, but we're only using the V0, V1 and V2, which is a little less data and you always want to be very optimized when you're using tessellation in your shaders. And this amount and this amount is the minimum and maximum amount of units in Unity, uh, from the camera position to the vertex of the shader. And of course we also got the displacement function, but I'm not going to go into detail on that. So that's it for this short introduction into tessellation shaders. From this point on, we will start creating the snow track shader. Special thanks to Devin the Dude and Yumi 